So in terms of our topic today, why don't you go ahead and start by telling us the first idea that you'd like to share with us about making mm -hmm. someone chase you. My goal really in this interview, Michelle, is to begin to open up some truths about what makes a woman attractive that are deeper and perhaps are said in a way that you haven't heard before. So the first idea, the first concept here is something that I call uh, being in rapport with being single. So what that means is uh, many of the women that I've worked with who are suffering, who are uh, wanting a relationship and feeling like they can't get into one, um, or in a relationship where they feel like they're compromising themselves, uh, all have something in common. And what that thread is, is that there is this rejection of them being single. There is this making wrong that they're single. There's this fear of being single. There's this fear of being alone. And oftentimes what happens when you have this deep fear of being single or this deep fear of being alone, uh, there's certain compromises that you make in your relationships with people, and there are uh, almost reactionary patterns that you have when picking a partner, uh, because you've got this fear of being single nipping at your heels, so it's almost like you're not intentionally moving forward towards what it is that you really want, but rather you're running away from what I like to call the abyss, the abyss of being single. You're running away from it into almost anybody's arms that'll take care of you, that'll catch you. and that can lead to really bad and unhealthy relationship patterns. It can also lead to a lack of presence in the relationship. It can lead to a lack of intimacy because uh, you're not fully in the relationship by choice, but rather you're just trying to escape from a fear that you haven't dealt with. So that's really the first place to begin to examine is what is it, what, how can you begin to actually befriend and create being alone an ally in your life? How can you begin to appreciate actually being single and stop running from it, but find the joy, the power, the gratitude in being single? Because from that place, what happens is you find your center, you find your balance, and the choices you make around men, the choices you make around being able to flirt and being able to develop boundaries become so much more online. They become so much more powerful and conscious. Uh, so I'm going to stop right there. Does that, does that land? Does that make sense? It does land. It does land for sure. And I'm thinking back to my own years of being single because I met and married my husband becoming a first time bride at age 43. And I know I went through a period of time during those years of being single where I really did have a deep fear of being alone. And what you're talking about really is resonating because during that period of time, I did not make wise relationship choices. I was kind of getting into relationships more by default rather yes. than by choice. Yes. Yeah, so I call that it really does resonate. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful reflection and it's almost as if one can get into a relationship by accident then rather than relationship on purpose. And uh, it's an easy way to uh, it's kind of like you're using the relationship at that point as salvation from something internally that you haven't dealt with rather than using the relationship as a platform to truly build something beautiful from it's using the relationship as a tourniquet to stop the the bleeding of being single the the fear of being alone and so this internal shift is something that is one that i invite people to begin to look at within themselves that if you want to really create an outstanding relationship and build a foundation with a man that lasts it really starts with the relationship that you have with yourself and how in rapport and how much of a friend you can be to your current experience rather than trying to run from it, rather than thinking it's broken, trying to fix it. And that the relationship it comes and suddenly now you'll be delivered back to the, to the garden of Eden to use that metaphor, right? It's, it's finding that peace and that, that power and that gratitude now, and then acting from that place. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I love this idea, and I think it's so incredibly powerful, and I'm so grateful that you led with this. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm not the only woman. Uh, obviously, you're talking about this. You've seen this as a theme, and I'm thinking yeah. I'm not the only woman who's fallen into that pattern at some point in their life, and there may be some people going through that now. 
so what yeah. are some of the ways we can really befriend mm. that the the experience of being single? I know you mentioned gratitude. I know you mentioned peace. But for women out yeah. there that are saying, "Well, this sounds like a great idea," but how do I really how do I really do that? What makes that possible for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So I'll give you one. Uh, one access point here, and then there may be some more that surface. Uh, but one that comes to mind is beginning to become aware of your self-talk. Begin to really get in touch with what are the things that you're telling yourself and saying. What are some of the uh, things that you're saying to yourself, perhaps when you're journaling around being single? Are you compassionate with yourself? Are you beating yourself up? Uh, are you asking questions that you really don't want the answers to? Like, why me? Why does this never happen for me? Uh, I, oh, he's just going to leave me again, isn't he? Like, looking at where you may be really rejecting the experience, being harsh on yourself, and not speaking to yourself as a friend. Okay, so that's the step, first step, is becoming aware of that internal dialogue and noticing how you're talking to yourself and pitting yourself against yourself. And you can do this by journaling. You can do this by talking into an audio recorder. Uh, you can do this by working with a coach or a therapist and having somebody reflect back the beliefs and the self-talk that you say that can be challenged with a little bit more love and acceptance and awareness. And from there, it's beginning to consciously choose how do you want to talk to yourself in this situation? How can you actually begin to change the experience and speak to yourself lovingly? Speak to yourself almost as if you were speaking to a, a daughter or a niece or a son who may have this fear. How would you comfort them? How would you provide them security? And actually speaking to that part, that younger part of yourself that may be activated there in that way. Practicing giving yourself the reassurance, regulating your own emotional experience with, uh, with language that is supportive and accepting and compassionate. And it, what this does is it begins to also set in place a model to where when you are, when speaking to yourself compassionately becomes familiar and it becomes a model in which you communicate with yourself, you are that much more likely to be, to be able to identify quality men and people that will also speak to you that way in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is incredibly important and powerful too. And it's so interesting when we do start paying close attention to our own self-talk, how often we would find ourselves speaking to ourselves in a way that we would never in a million years speak to anyone else. Um, in other words, it can be really a form of self-abuse if we're not watching that carefully. Yeah, 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 beautiful. It's it's uh, you, you put it very eloquently, and that's uh, um, unfortunately that is how that is what it can be is self abuse. Um, something else that comes to mind while uh, you were uh, talking here was this element of just even re beginning to look at the experience of being single and just simply starting to ask the questions: uh, What good thing comes? What is the benefit of being single? What is the opportunity that I have now? that I can take advantage of while being single that I perhaps won't be able to when suddenly I have to run my decisions through someone else's nervous system, right? Because that's the reality of a relationship is suddenly you've got another person's nervous system that is inter intertwining with yours. Uh, and there is a, your freedom is definitely adjusted. Uh, perhaps self-care can also be adjusted as well because there's somebody else that you're looking out for. So how can you begin to appreciate and look at being single as an opportunity and what are some of the things that you still want to do or some of the things that you want to, the ways you want to take care of yourself now or the experiences that you want to have um, and actually beginning to do those and, and uh, really appreciate the opportunity and the space that you have when you don't have a partner in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really well put. I, I think for so many of the experiences of life, whether it be being single or another thing that we might consider to be a challenge or something that we feel like we'd like to have be different in our lives, it's really important to look for the opportunity and to look for the blessings and the gifts in each part of life's experiences. I mean, I know uh, myself, uh, I'm a cancer survivor. 
which sounds like a terrible experience, and I'm not going to say it was fun. But I can tell you there were gifts and blessings in that experience. I experienced some profound experiences in my life that are incredibly valuable to me and deepen my understanding about a lot of things about myself and a lot of things about life. And I'm not necessarily comparing being single with cancer, but what I am saying is that every experience of life has some gifts and some blessings inherent in them if we can, if we can choose to find them and see them. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I think a, I heard a quote, and I don't know who said this, but it's one that is always there in the background that sums up what you're saying in some ways is this, that, that the experiences that often seem painful and the ones in, in that perhaps seem unnecessary are often what create the container for the joy, the happiness, and the gratitude to occur within. And when we're trying to reject the painful experiences and seeing them as unnecessary or we're turning away from them, uh, we're actually compromising the container in which those good things can actually come into our lives. Mm-hmm. So when we can turn towards those, turn towards the cancer, turn towards the loss, turn towards the suffering and say, yeah, actually say yes to the experience in the sense of I'm going to experience this, I'm going to feel it and not necessarily make it wrong. Uh, I believe that we really build up a bandwidth to uh, experience some of the highest highs in life at that point. Mm-hmm.